Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to get the WireGuard configuration information from your Nord Links configuration, which is typically kept very secretive and it's proprietary uh, by NordVPN. Uh, why might you want this information? The number one reason I could think of is wanting to use WireGuard, which is a, mass, a much faster protocol than OpenVPN on a router or some other sort of device that doesn't support Nord Links natively. Uh, I kind of intuited this from looking at a few other guides, but the closest guide I could find to this actually required you to either install Linux on a computer or in a VM, download the Nord Links client for Linux, download WireGuard for Linux, and do a bunch of snooping with ifconfig and all your interfaces and stuff like that. This is going to be a lot easier, and you literally just need to have the NordVPN official client on macOS. So let's get started. All we have to do is do a quick connect or connect to the server of choice. So the advantage of using Nord's official client is it always auto connects you to a server based on your location, uh, assuming you didn't override the auto location and the server's uh, current load to try to optimize your connection. In this case, I don't really care. I just want a server somewhere in the US. So I hit quick connect and now I'm going to disconnect. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open keychain access. And I'm going to type in Nord, and you'll see that, okay, this Nord VPN configuration last changed at 6.42 p.m. It's 6.43 now. So that means that every time you connect to a server, this entry in your keychain gets updated. Interesting to know. So what we're going to do now is double click on it, and we're going to check show password. Now, this next part, I'm going to have to blur a lot of stuff out because you're actually going to get to see my private key, which, as the name would imply, is private. If you have this information, you could literally type verbatim what you see on your screen and use my NordVPN account, my money, use up one of my devices to access NordVPN. And God forbid you're doing something super, super bad or illegal where somehow even, you know, the government finds out and then I'm in cuffs. It's a whole thing. We don't want that again. So here we go. Check show password. It's going to ask you to type in your Mac OS login password, not your NordVPN password, the password you use to get onto your Mac. So I'm going to type that. It's going to ask you to do it again. Type that. And now you're just going to see mesh IP addresses and nothing else, except you triple click it or click it once, command A, and then command C or right click and hit copy. What you're going to want to do next is go into any text editor. I would really recommend you use something like Sublime or VS Code, uh, not text edit or God forbid pages or Microsoft Word. You're going to open up a new window and you're going to paste this in. And now is the point where I'm going to have to block things out, but you're going to go view and toggle word wrap in whatever editor you're using. So if all goes well, this is blurred out, but you'll see there's a field for private key with quote and then a bunch of random letters, numbers, and symbols, end quote. For private key, you're going to want to actually copy what's in there. But before you do that, you're going to see that there is a backslash and then a slash or a backslash somewhere in that private key. You're going to want to remove just the backslash. I repeat, just the backslash. A little bit of background on why this is. Your private key and public key are base64 encoded 32-bit keys. So that means that there's 32 bits in this string and they're encoded in base64 format, which allows for all the characters that you'll see except for a backslash. You can have a forward slash, you can have an equals, you can have a plus, you can have zero through nine, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, but backslash not allowed. And backslash is typically used as an escape so my guess is that they needed to escape the character after it when storing it in the keychain for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure, but this is basically a JSON file stored as a keychain entry in macOS. Really hope they don't change it if they see this video because this is really easy, easy to do. So delete any backslash you see in private key, copy private key, and then I'm going to put this template up. And this actually I got from another guy on YouTube. Didn't speak English, so I didn't quite understand what he was doing. He was doing something kind of similar on Windows. But this is a template for a WireGuard configuration file. So here you'll see private key is empty. Don't put it in quotes. So remember, don't copy the quotes. Just paste your private key. Again, that should hopefully be blurred out. And then you're going to want to do the same thing with public key. You'll see that there's probably a backslash in there. Remove that. Copy between the, the quotes, drag, and paste it where it says public key. 
the next thing you're going to want to do is you'll see endpoint this is the actual ip address of the server you have just connected to it's not some global ip address for nordvpn that's going to route you to the greatest server at the time it's the actual server you just connected to so if for some reason later on that server is super overloaded it's very liable to be slow although nordvpn usually does a pretty good job of having enough servers but if it's slow you're going to have to go through this whole process again of connecting to a different server on your computer checking your keychain removing any backslashes and so on and so forth so we're going to copy that and we're going to paste that next to endpoint and you'll pretty much see that that's it don't worry about dns servers we're going to keep that at 9.9.9.9 .9 and you'll pretty much not have to worry about allowed ips either this is basically saying allow all ips and at that point you're going to want to save this as something ending in dot conf i call it wireguard.conf but just to verify it works what I would recommend you do is go to the App Store and add download the official WireGuard VPN client. First, make sure you're disconnected from NordVPN. You don't have to quit the app. Open the WireGuard client. And what we're going to do is we're going to import tunnels from file. Open that WireGuard.conf file. And if all goes well, it will say, would you like to add VPN configurations? You might remember a similar dialogue for when NordVPN asked you. This is just a different open source, cool, program asking your OS to do that. So we're going to allow that. And now comes the moment of truth. We have our public key, our private key, although the private key isn't displayed here. Hit activate and you'll see active. Looking so far so good. It's sending and receiving data. That's good. But let's give it one final test. Let's go to a website like uh, yahoo.com and it works. And let's go to wtfismyip.com. Hopefully it's not our actual IP. Geographic location of the IP address is San Jose, but let's disconnect and then refresh. And if the VPN worked, it'll be different. And we have an IPv6 address and a different IPv4 address. Uh, that's just my public address. It's different, I promise you. I'm also blurring it out because I don't want you hacking into my home network or giving me DDoS attack or something like that. But that's it. You can do whatever you want with that CONF file. I don't know the frequency with which the private key changes. I imagine it's not much. I imagine it might be per device. I'm not sure. All I know is that I haven't actually tried connecting this device while using the private key in a wire guard configuration elsewhere. But, uh, you know, I'll update that in the description if I do find that out. I really thought I was going to have to install Linux and go through this whole rigmarole, but um, it worked.